Welcome to Small Frights, a small show for short films with big stories. Disclaimer, all opinions on Small Frights are our own. We do not intend to offend or upset any filmmakers' films we cover on this show. Making films is super hard, so if you've gotten this far, that's an achievement in and of itself. Thank you for creating independent cinema, and keep on trucking along. Warning, this review contains spoilers for the film. Valentine Bluffs is a My Bloody Valentine fan film written and directed by Tom Smith that released on Valentine's Day 2023. The film is available to watch for free on YouTube. Link is in the description. After the horrific events that took place in Valentine Bluffs, TJ and Sarah struggle to move on with their lives in a new town. Circumstances force TJ to move back to his hometown, where he tries to start a new life. Forty years pass, and the town of Valentine Bluffs has forgotten the names of Axel Palmer and Harry Warden. The next generation is getting ready to celebrate the big Valentine's Day dance. All seems well until an ominous figure wielding a pickaxe appears, leaving a trail of carnage behind. So if you've seen our My Bloody Valentine episode of Horror on Wheels, you'll know that I'm a major fan of My Bloody Valentine, and live just outside where the film was shot. I had heard about this fan... I had heard about this fan film last year and didn't really know it released till someone shared the review when it came across my Twitter feed. So I tracked it down, which was quite easy as it's available to watch for free on YouTube on the channel Wheeze in Hollywood. Now I know how hard it is to make a short film, so I can't imagine how tough it is to make a feature length film with just a crowdfunding budget. So I have to give major, major props to the production team for pulling off a feature length fan film and not being able to make a cent off of it. Very impressive guys. So if you've seen the film, these are some of the notes I took kind of as a play-by-play as I've watched. So the first few minutes of the opening of the film, um, I didn't take that many notes. Actually, my first little kind of critique isn't until TJ's son and his girlfriend are driving to Valentine Bluffs. Someone either on the radio or voiceover says that Harry Warden killed their father Hollis. In the original film, Hollis was one of the 20-something-year-old miners who were killed during the story, along with his girlfriend Patty. It was probably just meant to be a little reference to the original, but story-wise, it didn't really make sense. None of the core group in the original film made any reference to them having children, especially Hollis. So unless he didn't actually die and somehow got freaky with Patty, who got a pickaxe through the stomach after the events of the movies, maybe as zombies, then they would have had a kid, which is kind of unrealistic and its own horror movie itself. Next up, and this is just because I live outside real-life Valentine Bluffs, I really wish the film could have made a tiny bit more effort to be a little more Nova Scotia looking. After all, the film canonically takes place in Nova Scotia. So even a few Nova Scotia flags around in the set deck would have immersed me a little more. Having a Canadian beer company in the scenes where there's drinking would have helped. Maybe a few Canadian tuxedos. Immersion through the subtle details of the films also takes me to my next point. It's February in Nova Scotia. In the original film, everyone is bundled up a little more during the outdoor scenes because it's cold as balls here. A lot of the time, people look semi-adequately dressed, but TJ's son's girlfriend goes to the miners' museum in workout clothes. Could you not have thrown a jacket on her? I don't know many people who would march out in the dead of night of winter in their Lululemon clothes. One thing I noticed about the script is that I felt I was not the target audience for the writer. I mean, obviously they wrote this for My Bloody Valentine fans, which I am, of course, But I found everything to have a very male focus. All the women put up with their shitty boyfriends or the shit their boyfriends say and have YouTube appropriate sex and run around in their underwear and overly long shots, usually of their butts or boobs. It may just be me, but I found all the women super unrealistic except for TJ's new wife. And that just might be because she was a stereotypical middle-aged woman trying to keep her family safe. Peter's girlfriend, Abby, literally has perky nipples when she's being stabbed to death. Now I know I said it was cold outside, but like, come on guys. That's just one thing in particular that completely took me out of the film and could have done without like 80% of the time. The only scene like that I would have left in is the recreation of the lost scene from the original movie where the miner stabs the young lovers through the back while they're having sex. Now I know crowdfunding for films is tough, so getting sponsorships from companies is an awesome way to get the funds for your film in exchange for some promo in your film. However, I did find the commercials within the film really distracting and too long, making it feel like YouTube was giving me an ad break rather than the film advertising its sponsors to me. So the things I did like, luckily there was a lot. Uh, I really enjoyed a lot of the references to Sylvia's death that Paul made. It's quote unquote nice in some way that he never really moved on from that, and I think it was a really good 
sort of character thing to include. Uh, the first minor jump scare was really shocking and made me jump. I love the hot dog kill reference from the original film. The Legion or Hall that they filmed the dance in was very reminiscent of how Legions look here in Nova Scotia, which felt a bit more immersive for me, but a Canadian flag or two in the background would have added to that a bit more. The set and props designers did an incredible job recreating the Welcome to Valentine Bluff sign. Petition for the government officials of Sydney Mines to buy that sign from them and permanently install it in the town. The lighting while the two partygoers explored the Darkened Miners Museum was fantastic, absolutely beautiful lighting. Though the Sylvia mannequin in the museum was absolutely morbid, it did seem somewhat realistic that a place trying to capitalize on a tragedy would do something like that. I thought them shooting in an actual mine was a fantastic choice and looked amazing. I myself filmed inside of a portion of a coal mine before and it's a tough job, so I commend the crew for taking on that challenge and pulling it off wonderfully. The shot where the miner is stabbing the deputy sheriff with his pickaxe was cool. I'm really glad they did an upshot, I think it's called, because it looked great. Also, major bonus points for the one Moosehead beer bottle on Axel's desk at the end. I was really worried that Moosehead beer wasn't going to make the cut, but it was a great little nod to simply how many times they showed it in the original film. So let's talk about the ending. Honestly, I thought it was a little too on the nose to have Peter be the killer, but okay. It still doesn't really make sense to me why he killed his girlfriend, though. I thought Axel being alive was a bit of a surprise, definitely sets up a sequel to this fan film, which would ultimately create a trilogy. But basically everyone is dead in this fan film universe, plus Peter Cowper confirmed George Mahalka's almost done writing a sequel to the original film, so I guess we'll see. If you're a big My Bloody Valentine fan and looking for a fan film continuation of the original, I would recommend seeking this out and give it a watch. It's probably something I wouldn't watch again, and even though there were parts I enjoyed, I still found the majority of it to be a bit of a slow crawl. A huge round of applause for the cast and crew for pulling this off. We hope you enjoyed this review and will continue to seek out small and independent films, both online and in festivals. Thank you for watching Small Frights. Bye bye <laughs>